your TMAO levels are high. Ouch. TMAO is the new bad guy. Just like cholesterol, TMAO is associated with cardiovascular disease, although it's not clear whether it's a cause or a consequence. Either way, it's increasingly being measured, and when it's high, your doctor will sit up and take notice, because it hints that you're in real trouble. You're a heart attack waiting to happen. Current guidelines consider values of more than 10 micromolar as high risk, values between 6.2 and 9.9 micromolar as intermediate risk, and when the value is less than 6.2 micromolar, then you're at low risk. If your TMAO levels are high, there's no pill to swallow yet. So if your levels are high, your doctor will want to take aim at your cholesterol levels and get them down stat. Remember, you're a heart attack waiting to happen. Now, in an ideal world, what gets measured should be managed. But to manage a problem, you need to know what's causing it. And, well, there's a lot we don't know. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we learn a little bit more about TMAO from start to finish. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, TMAO is ultimately a bacterial metabolite. The bacteria living in your gut produce trimethylamine when they tuck into certain nutrients, typically found in animal protein. The source nutrients are choline, betaine, and carnitine. Now, these nutrients are metabolized by gut bacteria into TMA, and as the TMA passes through the liver, the liver pops an oxygen onto some of the TMA, creating TMAO. Now both TMA and TMAO circulate, and as they pass through the kidney, the kidney filters them out. So when TMAO accumulates, you could blame the diet slash gut bacteria for increased production, the liver for being overzealous with the oxidation step, or the kidney for keeping the toxin instead of peeing it out. Now the current thinking is it starts with the diet. So if TMAO levels are high, odds are your doctor will tell you to cut out meat and eggs, since these are the foods with the highest carnitine and codeine levels. This simple dietary intervention will fix everything. It's a two-for-one deal. You'll lower your TMAO, and your cholesterol. Uh, but hang on a minute. Fish is full of TMAO, and odds are this is something your doctor will encourage you to eat more of. It doesn't add up. This inconsistency prompted a group of researchers based in Poland to explore where the TMAO is coming from. Now, they had a hunch that, well, it was not from the diet. So they decided to explore TMAO levels in rats that had heart disease, thanks to bad genes, not a bad diet. The clan of rats they studied are known as spontaneously hypertensive heart failure rats, or SHHF rats for short. They're considered to be a model of metabolic syndrome with hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and congestive heart failure. Basically, they're in trouble no matter what they eat, and their health problems manifest early. Heart failure appears at 10 months of age, but their health problems are relatively heart-specific. Liver function and kidney function is more or less normal, which made them a good model to study. So our team kicked off their study by measuring TMA and TMAO levels in everything. They confirmed that the SHHF rats have very high TMAO levels. But there was nothing to suggest the increase had anything to do with the liver or kidney. When they calculated the level of liver TMAO oxidation using the ratio of plasma TMAO to TMA, they found that it was the same as in healthy rats. 
and urine levels were actually significantly higher, implying that their SHHF rat's kidney was doing a good job of cleaning the toxin. So, if it's not diet, liver, or kidney function, what could it be? Well, well, what was different was the level of TMA in their poop. In the case of the SHHF rats, there was a lot less. So our team did a little bit more maths, and they discovered that it wasn't that the SHHF rats were making more TMO, but they were absorbing more. Something was wrong in the gut. So our team took a look inside the gut of the animals to see what was happening. And things did not look normal. Both the villi in the jejunum as well as the enterocytes lining the villi were shorter. And things did not look much better in the colon. And this is really important because this is the place where most of the TMA is likely to be made. The height of the colonic mucosa was significantly reduced. Now, one of the reasons the gut wall looked different is blood flow to these nether regions is diminished when cardiac output is compromised. Less blood means less oxygen and nutrients are delivered. And, well, it's hard to perform well when you're hungry and tired. Leaks happen. This research suggests the TMAO problem has very little to do with diet and everything to do with being tired and hungry. And the tired and hungry starts with the heart. This leads to a tired and hungry colon, which then leaks. Mm, maybe you're thinking, yes, but my heart is not failing. Maybe not yet. But heart failure is more common than we think. And it turns out the type of heart failure associated with metabolic syndrome is harder to detect. Plus, heart failure is the end, literally and figuratively, of years and years of bad body chemistry. If you're insulin resistant, your heart is taking strain. This is one of the reasons why telltale sign of metabolic syndrome is high blood pressure. Rising TMAO is a sign you're crossing a threshold and it's time to get serious. So what can you do to tackle the TMAO issue? Well, first of all, you want to get the blood flowing. There are lots of ways to do this and moving more will definitely help. So will dietary changes. But you do need to make the right changes. Cut carbs, not choline and carnitine. Both choline and carnitine are nutrients that help create better body chemistry. They're not bad guys. If you want to learn more, watch the featured video. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website and browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who has high TMAO? Share this video with them so they can begin to address the real cause of the problem. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.